I may hate drama in my life, but I love talking about the drama in yours. I may watch too much reality TV, but you're listening to me talk about it. What's up? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We're here. Yeah. We're back. This is your host, Fumi. And B. And you've tuned in to a new week of reality TV where we're trying to bring reality to reality TV. Yes, yes, yes. And I had a pretty good day. So I, maybe that's why I'm all like, what's up? Like Martin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did have a good day. Mm. The devil tried it. Super tried it. Really tried to take me, you know, out of my comfort zone. And they succeeded for a few minutes. But, you know, the blessings outlie the curses, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. You know, yeah. I binded them from doing harm against me. All right. And <laughs> We're here. So, yeah, good day as well. And then it's like, you know, Christmas is coming. Rudolph I'm feeling a little. Nose reindeer mm-hmm. Had a very shiny nose. Yeah, I think it's real crazy how, you know, speaking of Rudolph, uh-huh. they really hated on him for his red nose. And in the end, they needed him. Yeah, they, they hated him because he was black with a red nose. Just can't let us be great. <laughs> just totally kidding. Reindeers <laughs> included. <laughs> Are you hating on me because I got this red? You still need me? <laughs> what that sound like? Right. My petty ass would have been Christmas Eve. Nope, Santa. <laughs> nope. Oh, oh, now you need me? No. Where was you when they, Prancer and all them, was trying to jump me? Right. I'm going to need an extra, you know, you know, snack or something. <laughs> For my troubles. Deliver your own goddamn presents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get credit for this anyway. <laughs> right? Just they the- don't be like, ask Rudolph what he want for Christmas. They're like, ask Santa. His fat ass ain't even the one foot. You need me to get there. I know. Okay. Off topic. But yes, we're here. Um, another week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I guess we could, we could be honest. Usually we have like our little outline of shows and points and stuff. We have none of that today. We We're going off the top of our head. We came over to the so studio. if it's some stuff that we forgot, write us and <laughs> we will plug it in next week. Right. <laughs> um, you know. Maybe we will. (laughs) Maybe we won't. But, you know, today we're just completely just, we're talking about what comes off the top of our head. I think it'll be fun. It will be fun. This is, like, really our first, like, super freestyle because we, I don't have no notes. I have, Mm -hmm. I have nothing. (laughs) You have everything. I have (laughs) No, it's I have have everything. everything. You have nothing. (laughs) Shout out to Marcus. (laughs) Good old family guy. I have everything. (laughs) And you have nothing. (laughs) Because in the body guard and uh-huh. the threatening letters uh-huh. that Rachel Marin was getting sent to rest uh-huh. in peace Whitney uh-huh. um and the notes it was clippings it was like I have nothing and you have everything like oh <laughs> you mad like right. you have nothing well I guess her song I was, mean you got I a printer nothing. to make this <laughs> letter so it, obviously you have something it was some man somebody must have took a lot of time like magazine clips okay I'm we're not gonna talk about my favorite movie juice. I was so Let's... thirsty before I left the house it happens. I got this uh, Raisin Cane's Raiders Cup. <laughs> it's like, why do you guys have a Raiders Cup they, and it the was Raiders like not the even day, out in Vegas the yet? The day it got announced, it was like, chop, chop. <laughs> <laughs> we got merch to sell. To production. <laughs> <laughs> We've got merch to sell. <laughs> we need cups, beanies. The official cup of Raider Nation. It's like, the Raiders don't even here, go yeah. here. They're still in Oakland. <laughs> right. Like So the- it's like if you're in Vegas, are you like preparing yourself to be a fan? Or are you still like, fuck the Raiders? I'm still a Cowboys fan until the Raiders get here. Like, how does that work? I I I, I don't know. All I don't know is that this orange juice is c- good coming from this Raiders cup. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh yeah, this week was very up and down. Like yeah. it was good, and then there was something that happened that was super annoying, and so on and so forth. Um, overall, I had a pretty good week. I don't think I ran into any stupid people while I was out. 
Um, I know last week I talked about the bitch who didn't know how to parallel park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah. you know, I did do a, another idiot with, at the school. So <laughs> they're always somebody's parent. And you know, yeah, yeah, they're idiot. They're idiot parents. And then they raise idiot kids. Right. And then the cycle continues. Yeah. I mean, it. some people might take it the wrong way, but I've always had the saying, I don't like other people's kids. And to clarify what I mean by that, <laughs> I don't really mesh well with other parents because I'm very different on how I parent. Mm-hmm. Not saying that I'm better because there's just some things I do and other parents don't. That mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that I'm better at parenting than anyone else. But I do parent differently. Right. I don't teach my kid to do the nene. I don't like let my son <laughs> sing songs that involve cussing and think that it's cute. Like yeah. there's just some things I do not do. Line. I don't know, maybe because I'm like still a little bit old school and I'm Nigerian too. So yeah. I don't know, maybe it's a mixture of both. So ultimately parents teach their kids certain things too. And then ultimately I don't like other people's kids. <laughs> It's not your fault, kid. Yeah. So it's like, if your kid is the one that likes to fall out because they didn't get a snack, I don't want my kid around that kid because I'll be damned. (laughs) If he thinks so. If he thinks that he can fall out on the floor because he didn't get fruit snacks. Like, no, no, no. We don't don't do that up in here. And because of the way they're parent, I've had a lot of people. Be like, oh, your son's so well behaved. I'm like, how the fuck should he be? Right? You think like, he running this damn house? <laughs> the fuck you think? <laughs> and then it's like, my and you know Malachi very well. Yeah, I don't really have to really say much to him. Right? Like him, me slightly raising my voice is his version of the spanking. Like yeah. he does not like getting in trouble. So I don't have to really do much. Right. It's like, you know what? No Netflix for you. <laughs> there will be no My Little Pony tonight. You oh. cannot watch it. And he doesn't watch anything that's not animated. That's not something I told him. That's just him. Like if it's not animated, he's like, it's for big people. I don't want to watch it. Like that's not, I didn't teach him that. Right. So School has been super easy. I don't really have to like go over spelling tests like every day, two, three times a day because mm-hmm. he pretty much knows how to spell words. I don't know, maybe because I was pregnant and going to school and, <laughs> right. and taking that god dang microbiology and yeah. hematology class while I was pregnant, going around campus. But uh, that's pretty much why I don't like other people's kids. But anyway, back to these stupid parents. <laughs> so. When you drop off the kids, I like the structure of this school because they have Mm -hmm. lanes where you can literally drop off your kid near the gate and just drive off. Like, you can just wait until they get into the gate, which is what I do, and just drive off. You don't have to get out the car if you don't want to. So, this time around, I've been kind of parked kind of far. So, I go around, but I kind of wait until I physically see my son go in the gate. Yeah. God forbid something can happen in that 10, 15 seconds where somebody snatches up his little black self right. and I'm out of a kid and now I'm going to murder everybody. Yeah. So, to prevent me murdering anybody, I just wait <laughs> until he gets through the gate. Right. The person behind me is going so fast that I don't really have time to, like, back into a parking spot. So, I'm like move to the side, so I'm, like, perpendicular to parking spots. Like, three parking spots. Kind of like the episode of Homer when he tried to fake like he was disabled, and he parked (laughs) in, like, three parking spots and got out the car, like, dragged his leg. (laughs) But then, because they were coming up so fast, I didn't know that they were trying to park in a parking spot, too. So I'm like, well, if you weren't so close to me, I wouldn't have thought you you were trying to go around me, and you were trying to get in a parking spot. Yeah, I mean, that's, like, the most irritation that I had all week. Yeah, it's usually always someone's stupid driving habits that just... The most idiotic. Right, you took this week from perfect to great. And I have to tell you, I thought LA drivers were bad. Oh, no. Um, No, no. There's nothing compared to these Vegas drivers. Like, no disrespect to my Vegas friends, (laughs) but your city is bullshit when it comes to drivers. Like... Um, people don't know when to get over, don't know when to use signals, braking when they're not supposed to be braking, like really slow when they don't have to be slow. And nine times out of 10, it's Nevada plates. 
So yeah. that actually happened to me last night coming from boot camp. I'm going a smooth good 80 on the freeway because there's hardly no one on there. And that's right. what everyone's doing. Yeah. So this car that I'm um, that's in front of me, they just kind of break, not a swift break, but just like a maybe took me from like 80 to like. 60 or something it was pretty swift so i'm yeah. like oh my god like what happened did the car stop in front of you right. are we coming up on traffic or mm-hmm. something no you just decided i just want to swiftly slow down like nah in la <laughs> i can do a smooth <laughs> you can't and mind you i'm driving an hour to yeah. the office in an yeah. hour back home minimum yeah. when i was working in santa Ana. yeah so it's just a lot of people, but yeah. as far as like the driver specifically, it's worse. Like they they don't do m- as much in LA as far as like to do stupid stuff on the road to where you yeah. can get in an accident. Like you're not supposed to get on the freeway and only go 50 miles an hour when <sighs> everybody else is going a minimum of 65. Right. Like, like what, bitch, what are you, you about doing? to cause an accident? Yeah, they don't mm-hmm. do stuff like that. They are pretty like. Get on the We've freeway. Go. If you're going fast, go get over all yeah. the way. Like, I'll be, you know, like you skate. Got your playlist. Yeah, I'm stuff. like, yeah, be smooth and switching legs. <laughs> like, you get over, I get over, yeah. Like, <laughs> right, it works. It's just smooth. Like, right. here, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? You got to be at 10 and 2. 10 right. and 2, my ass. No, like, really paying attention because you like, you know what? I yeah, you have no idea what the other person is doing. The person behind me, in front of me, on the side. But, you know, hey, I guess. It's just... It's the cost you pay for cheaper living. I right? <laughs> and I, I'm sorry for contributing to the gentrification of Vegas yeah. and greater Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's yeah. so much cheaper here. I brought up my L.A. money for Vegas living. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of living life right now. Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner up in this bitch. <laughs> But um, anyway, getting back to our rogue episode today, right. <laughs> since we have Let's no outline, see. um, definitely start off with um, Black Ink Crew, yes, New York, yes, oh yes. So in this particular episode, the renovation in um New York one thirteenth have been finally been done. Yes, it looks really nice. Yes. It- the first episode right no second episode yes yes second episode i'm sorry see, yeah no outline see what happens right <laughs> <laughs> but i had to remember because i've seen both episodes i was just like wait first or second yeah they yeah. kind of run for some yeah. reason they kind of mesh together but it looked really nice in there it's it like all chic and they're trying to be bougie and like yeah upscale and have champagne while you're getting a tattoo i don't even know if that sounds legal but right like don't your blood run it thins your blood or it's I don't know I've never really had alcohol before I went yeah. to gotten tattoos. So. I think I've heard that because all the times I thought I would get a tattoo, I was like, "Well, I'll just take some shots." And everyone has told me you can't do that because it thins your blood, so you'll bleed more. And I was like, "Yeah, well, that don't sound good." Right? No, but anyway, you <laughs> they know. got the right idea, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, a thought that counts. And um, in this particular episode, um, Donna. Young Bay and Miss Kit went to like play tennis because she was Donna was stressed out with the phone call from like her ex boyfriend, mm-hmm. and then she got it her ex husband really. Yeah, she got into her ex husband's sister. She right. thought she was close and like called her just to see like, hey, is he really getting out? And it wound up being an argument on the phone. Like you put my brother's name in the mud and blah 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 blah. I'm sorry, but if my now ex husband was beating my ass. And I'm on reality TV. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say because Mm -hmm. that's my truth. Now, if you have a problem with me telling the truth about your brother, it's one thing where I'm lying. But you're not saying I'm lying. You're saying I'm dragging his name. So if you don't want me to drag his name, then you can make sure he don't need to beat nobody. He's dragging me. (laughs) Right? How dare you? He can drag me by my hair, but I can't drag his name. Right. That seems a little Like, unfair. he's still physically okay. Right. I mean, he in jail. How how much further can I drag his name in the mud? Right. Like, and for real, And he went for to real. jail by his own account. And he even... got a missing tooth. Yeah. Teeth. I think it's more than one. I think so. So, yeah. what, what does that have to do with anything with me? Yeah. Just messy, dumb, ghetto, just... 
But then her nice young young chocolate man with a very nice thick beard, healthy beard. Yeah, good old beard. Came and bought her a puppy. The cutest little puppy. It was like a Pomeranian or I something. I wanna like say, that. yeah, a little black one. It was it's just so, so cute. cute. Mm-hmm. And I'm like it's funny how when you date somebody or or with somebody for a significant time or even married to somebody for a while and they're a piece of shit and then when you finally get in a new relationship and see how good it is, it's kind of like almost too good to be true. Yeah. That you're like, well, I'm used to doing, um, you know, mess around with fuck boys. Like, this don't seem right. It almost yeah. makes you want to be like, you know what? Maybe I should step back away. You kind of self-sabotage. Yeah. She kind of almost did that. Because she yeah. was talking to, like, Young Bay and Miss Kit. Like, you know, everything's doing so good and all this stuff coming up with my ex-husband. Like, I don't, I don't want, want him to put him yeah. in the drama and stuff. And then we're like, well, maybe we should just take a break. She's They're like, why would you do that? If you love him and you care about him, you know, let your man be there for you. Instead of kind of control him and take out his decision of being the man to be there for you. Exactly. And I think that's what a lot of women do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) I was looking for something deep to elaborate on. (laughs) I'm just saying. And I was just like, yeah, I get it. And like, no, that's pretty much it. Yeah. It Yeah. It makes sense. So... You know, but, for that, I'm rooting for Don. But right when she was talking to them about him, then Production he came with the dang puppy. in with the dog. And then he had the dog in the tennis bag. Like, yeah. you know, good and well, your production was like, hey, take a tennis Just, bag and put yeah. the puppy in there. Right. They're going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> At this time. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he could have taught the puppy thing on his own. But as far as, like, bringing in the tennis bag to the tennis court, yeah. probably could have been, like, an additional help. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And so, um, Sky, this is what happens when I don't write shit down. Sky, yeah. um, really is coming to the point of where she really wants to meet her sons and she feels like she's ready this time. She feels yeah. like she's in a really good place. She has a house. She has a job. Ultimately, she has money from the show. Right. That's ultimately what it is. I mean, you can have a job, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're, like, ready to fully be there and be able to go see your sons at the drop of the hat in yeah. Texas. So, I know we presume earlier that they were, the two sons were adopted by two separate families, but it turns out they had the same ad- adoptive mom. Mm-hmm. And she was a white lady in Texas. And um, Sky called her, and she was very receptive, very open to Sky calling her, had no problems with it, um, and she said it was okay for her, Sky, to go to Texas, so, um, yeah, they went, she went with her best friend, but it's actually in next episode, we saw a sneak peek, oh, okay, so, in this second episode, they did not show the actual meeting in Texas, oh, okay, but we saw, I, I watch it on the app, so they have bonus clips, deleted mm-hmm. scenes, and sneak peeks for the following episode. So yes. we did see the scene where she did go to Texas. Um, so I don't want to necessarily speak on that because it hasn't come on yet. Yeah. But I will say I saw the interview with Duchess at the yeah. Breakfast Club. I had my opinions before I heard the or saw, watched the yeah. re- interview, and then I have opinions afterwards. Yeah, I yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Um, well, I guess <laughs> depending on what those opinions are, we haven't talked about them, right? But no, um, yeah, basically, I'm pretty sure if you guys have watched the Breakfast Club interviews, I guess C's went on the Breakfast Club first mm-hmm. and. Gave his version of events. I went back and watched that, too, just so I can get the full story of their sides, back and yeah. forth. And then I watched Duchess, Duchess's mm-hmm. interview. Duchess's? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duchess's. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely in her interview, she bought a lot of receipts and things like that. And what this, we mean by receipts, for those that you don't know, evidence. Yeah, evidence <laughs> of, like, things that were faked and altered by production. Mm -hmm. Um, Basically, after watching that interview, I mean, I still don't really care for Duchess. (laughs) No. 
However, well, I already knew it before the interview. Mm -hmm. Duchess is very driven and very goal-oriented and very motivated. Right. Motivating or motivated. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess just on, like, the woman empowerment successful tip, I will definitely give her 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 kudos for, like, opening her shop, already having her own business. Still wanting to be successful on her own. Yeah, and actually, you know, she's business savvy. I will give her that. Mm -hmm. Um, When the interview, when they came to ask her about the Sky situation, Mm -hmm. I didn't... I didn't feel as if she, how do I say this? Um, I feel like if she did, well, it's already been confirmed that she did have something to do with the setting up of Mm -hmm. Sky's son in her shop. Mm -hmm. I feel like not necessarily that it was right. she's claiming that she had nothing to do with the actual interview Interview itself. She wasn't there. She didn't know about it. Yeah. I kind of just felt like, I felt like that would have been her perfect opportunity for her to say, you know what, a year ago, my mom was posting on social media, Sky thought it was about Caesar, and she ended up making a video calling my mom all sorts of bitches and calling her outside her name. Mm -hmm. So a year later, when I was approached by her son and I had this and this opportunity, Mm -hmm. I didn't coach him on doing anything, I didn't force anything, and I didn't even reach out to him for attack. But I wasn't going to stop either. But when the opportunity was presented to me i thought in my head payback had she would have said that to me once again doesn't make it right right but it would have been like well you know you come for people's moms you got to be ready for whatever Mm -hmm. is gonna come back just Mm -hmm. you know as a natural reaction Mm -hmm. so that i just feel like when it comes to duchess i do agree as far as like She's very business savvy. Savvy. Yeah. She's motivated to be a woman in business. Yeah. She's educated. Mm-hmm. However, there are some times when people, women say, quote, unquote, women empowerment and women in business, but it's ultimately fucking bullshit. Yeah. And that's kind of what I don't understand because yeah. when she was with Caesar and being in the shop, she talked down to these people. Yeah. Like, you and know what, you're women. just, go go open the door. Be yeah. the reception that you are. And these are other women. Yeah. Like, who, for example, Sky, she has been through a hard life. In and out of jail, you know, had to give her sums up for adoption and things of that nature. It You would be able to say, if you were really about women empowerment, like, you came through a lot And you use this opportunity with the show to do better for yourself. And that's what's ultimately happening. But because I'm only a receptionist and you're a tattoo artist, I'm automatically below you. Below you. Yeah. And that's kind of like, well, well, this is, this is, you know, they're not the owner. They're not this. They're not that. I'm like, well, why don't you help them get to the point where they can be an owner? Right. Why do you have to talk shit about them? Yeah. So... Ultimately, when your mom got into the social media stuff between Duchess and Caesar, yeah, you're gonna you automatically know that some people are gonna come back for you, yeah. But the only person you have truly access to talk about is Sky, yeah, because she, you know her personally, yeah. Now, two wrongs don't make it right. Yes, it's not. Yeah, I understood. Where Duchess was coming from, only in the fact that she said that he's not a child, he's 19, he can do what he wants. Yeah. However, if you said more than that, you said she's a bad mother, mm-hmm. that um, you're, you wanted to see your son when, when they were 18, but they're 19 now, so where were you in this whole year? Yeah, I was like, that. what is that any of your business? Right. We clearly, well, it's I not mean, like her son was like 30. <laughs> it's like, right. Older like you, it's you like, still like she has to deal with the fact that she gave up her sons because she wasn't living a good life. And they might like that's already guilt enough. Her so, yeah. So ultimately, from what I'm finding out from the interviews, 
The oldest one's dad, Genesis, who was on the show and met mm-hmm. up with Sky and apologized, ultimately went behind Sky's back, met with the son first, and put stuff in his ear about his biological mother. Yeah. That's how I took it, and that's low as fuck. Well, yeah. Because yeah. he wasn't there either. So Mm-mm. why are you talking shit about Sky? Yeah. You weren't there either. So you're like, okay, well, let me get to this boy first and tell him about his mother so that way we can have a relationship and she can be looked at as the bad one. And we can expose her. And I'm just, uh, I wish he would have did some type of interview because it's like, why did you do that? Because you came on the show last season? Well, no, he was in the interview. Oh, we just was? haven't seen the whole, whole thing. thing. He was sitting right next yeah. to him. So it's like, So he why? did speak. Yeah, I have to go and look well, I at haven't that. seen the whole because thing. Because it's like, why? Because it was edited out. Yeah, why go and make up with her and then... Turn around and talk shit about her. Yeah. And so, like I said, I didn't want to talk about the sneak yeah. peek that we saw from next week. But you guys will understand yeah. and then from the adoptive yeah. mom how the the son's was feeling about Sky before and after yeah. the oldest right. one's dad came around. At least for the oldest yeah. one. The youngest one is fine. With adoption, unless mm-hmm. maybe I don't know something. Unless the father is like deceased or either you wasn't at the hospital to sign mm-hmm. the birth certificate or something. Mm-hmm. Like in order to have gave her kids up for adoption, mm-hmm. somehow wouldn't his signature have to be somewhere well, first of all, it can be different in different states. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he was ever on the birth certificate. Right. I don't know if he signed over his parental rights before he kind of just... Right, like, so it's dr- like either... It anyway. Yeah, so it kind of... You know, he's so quick to want to put... Paint Sky as the villain for like, oh, this is what she did. This is what she did. It's like, but where were you guys when y'all were teenagers? Because at the end of the day, you still went on went on this show and you apologized to her for essentially abandoning her when she was 15 and pregnant. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, well, how did you really turn your son's head? Because I would be like, It's okay. double standard. That's yeah. just how it is. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Dad cannot be there and it's Dad, okay. it is okay or I wouldn't even say okay. It is you get used to the fact that the father is not around. Yeah. yeah. That ultimately if the mom is not around, never whether remember. she was given up for adoption or she got her rights taken away, she will be seen much in a much more worse, worse light yeah. than the father not being around. Because the mom automatically has to be the one to take care of the children, whether the father is there or not. Yeah. Which is absolute bullshit. Yeah. Like, that doesn't make any kind of sense. Kind of like when you find out such and such got the custody of the kids, the father got the custody of the kids, people automatically are like, well, damn, what the fuck does she do? She's a horrible mother. She don't get custody of the kids. Yeah. Because it could have automatically been an agreement. Yeah, like, you know what? I'm cool with the weekend duties. <laughs> I'll pay child support. I mean, but what's no. wrong with that? But then she'll get looked at as a horrible mother because she had a, you know, a mutual agreement. Like, you know what? You can take the kids. I'll pay you child support or whatever. That's very true. And I I feel like we have personally talked about double standards and things like that. Mm-hmm. But that is actually, like, very true. Like, a mom can't be a part-time mom Mm -mm. and not have the same respect as a dad. Mm -hmm. Like, and this is nothing against dads that are part-time dads, but if you just have a dad that's like, every other weekend, I'm there, and the check is in the mail on time every month. You get looked like He's this crazy. Some hero, yeah, like, some oh, hero good and job. like you're an awesome dad. Or when you automatically see a man at a park with the kid, you don't know what their situation is. It mm-hmm. really could be a older brother with his super young brother. Yeah. And you're automatically like, oh my God, look at him. He looks so good with kids. It's like, dude, that's his brother. Yeah. But if you see a a girl with her super young sister. You're automatically saying, oh, well, she's a single mom. She's a slut. She can't keep her legs closed. Right. Like, what the fuck is the problem? Mm-hmm. 
Or if you find out a woman is with the kid and you don't have a ring on your finger, you automatically think that she's a single mom when yeah. it could be, well, you've been with your boyfriend for 10 years right? and y'all just never got married, but y'all live together and y'all just don't have rings. Then you're automatically like, oh, well, oh, you're a single mom. It's just, it's right. fucking you're ridiculous. Just the baby mama. Just yeah. Stuff. And I guess maybe I'll take it personally a little bit because yeah. I'm a single mom. And I'm when I mean I'm a single mom, I mean I'm a single mom. Like, right. my son is with me 98% of the time of the year. So that's what I classify me as a single parent. I would say I was a single parent and I'm a single mom. Single parent of parenting wise and single in the fact that I ain't got no, I ain't got no man. But yet, yet. We, yes, we're we going to speak that. into existence. <laughs> you heard it here. You like fluffy women? Go ahead, <laughs> call me. No, I'm just playing. But no, she's not. Right. Um, <laughs> that's what I meant to talk about my week. We'll, we'll get to it at the we'll end of the back. show. Yeah. Um, but I can't stand that double standard. Yeah. Because. People look at me with my son, I'm automatically single mom or, you know, oh, she made a mistake or whatever. But right. I'm pretty sure if my son's with his dad and he's by himself, it's automatically he's a good father, even though right, cause nobody he, else knows. It is the first time he had him all year. And I'm <laughs> not exaggerating on that. So, right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, really sad double standards. Um, but you know what really pissed me off? She had the audacity to talk about Sky's mothering. And she also had the audacity to talk about Caesar's fathering. Right. But you were with a man for five, five years. years. And now all of yeah. the sudden, you are talking about how he doesn't pay child support. How he was disrespect. How he cussed his baby mama out in front of his daughter. And on TV and yeah. cussed out his, his mom, mama, mother, and, his, and, and mom and sister. I'm like... So that as a woman didn't make you stop and say at the time if you will cuss out your your own mom your little sister and I remember that episode too mm-hmm. it was like two seasons ago mm-hmm. if you will cuss all them out mm-hmm. and mind you he cussed his mama out but then the very next season found out that she was like really sick with something mm-hmm. and of course he was at her hospital bed crying it's mm-hmm. like. Hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. I remember that. And then you cussing out your baby mom. When as a woman does that make you stop and be like, okay, I really got to check the type of person I'm with, which is the same thing that we always say. Like women, it's one thing to look back and be like, you know what? These are some red flags that I should have seen now that this relationship is over. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. But don't go and bash him. About the red flags after the fact. Right. And you were a willing participant in those red flags. He didn't even pay child support, but you picked up the bill. And you stayed with him. So obviously at the time you made it seem like that was okay. Right. A man is a man is only gonna do what you allow him to do. Exactly. C's didn't have no gun to his head. And then and oh And God. another thing. An- and another thing. <laughs> I, because also in the interview, she mentioned Mm -hmm. about um, a police report that was filed, but not, I don't know, charges were brought forth or something like that. She had mentioned um, against C's or something. And she was pretty much hinting about domestic violence. Right. And... I was not in the room with him, so I don't know what went on. If he put his hands on you, on no level am I saying that is okay and I don't condone it. However, especially now, Mm -hmm. we are in a time of where real victims of domestic violence, assault, rape, sexual harassment, all this stuff is coming out and it's automatically... Women are looked at as liars. Yeah. Nine times out of 10. It's like, you got to really prove, have some facts to prove your situation. Yeah. So if you're going to come out and say, or make claims of domestic violence or him putting his hands on you, say it. Don't sit there and try to like, well, I ain't going to say nothing. She but said you she just plead the fifth. Yeah. Don't do that. Because either say yes or no, don't yeah. make a speculation about it. If if he did do it, but you like, I just don't want to talk about it. Then just don't bring it up. 
Once again, I'm not saying that to say like women should you should it. yes, but in a time where it's like it's already hard enough for people to come forth, mm-hmm. and you sitting here like, well, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Book me on your next interview, and I'll tell you. Don't do that shit. Well, the only reason why they even asked her like. Did he put his hands on you because she made the comments of how he's disrespectful Respectful. to women exactly. and talk to me this kind of way, talk to his mom this kind of way, talk to his baby mom yeah. this kind of way. So obviously if you're going to say he doesn't do he doesn't act a certain type of way to women, people are going to speculate or even straight up ask you like Charlemagne would cuz that's something that he would do. Mm-hmm. If he put his hands on you and but then you say you plead the fifth. Yeah. So you can't say you plead the fifth. Yeah. You can't bring out an allegation like that and then... Because it's either yes or no. If it's yeah. no, you're not going to say plead the fifth. Yeah. If it's yes, then you're going to say plead the fifth. So, obviously, we know this ain't a court of law. Right. So, ultimately, you can't make these... We just live in a world where you don't make accusations. Because yeah. when it comes to time where somebody really has gone through something and they speak on it... People are going to automatically assume that she's lying more than he did it. Yeah. And that's just not right at all. Right. And that makes it hard for people who actually do go through stuff to not speak up about it. Yeah. Because they're just automatically going to be looked at they're liars. Mm-hmm. And we don't do that. No. Yeah. And, you know, Duchess, that was your interview. Now, C's, I watched your interview afterwards, too. And I will say... Aside from the silk, whatever fabric, (laughs) you know, that you've elevated your life to, I will say after watching that interview, you confirmed what I kind of already knew the last few seasons, that you're a cornball, specifically for the reason that you're a grown ass man Mm -hmm. and you talk about having all these businesses and all these accomplishments, which is great. Mm -hmm. What I'm about to say is not to take away from you, Mm -hmm. but the way I just feel about any man sitting here, just like bragging on who you smashed and how you did it. It just was a really big turnoff. Yes. Carly red. We can go. We all know Carly red. That's a given. She's an exception. Right. But for you to sit there and be like, well, you know, when you move to a new state, you know, Carly Red was like a welcome to Atlanta piece of pussy. <gasps> like what? Like, no. And then you did that with Tattoo Baby last year in Miami. Oh, yeah. You tried to make it seem like, oh, yeah, you know, you was smashing. It was fun while it lasted. And then she had to come out and be like, I'm cool with C's. I'm cool with everybody on Black Ink. However... Mm-hmm. It has never happened. It never it, happened. Yes. And then, you know, to even say, you might feel like because I guess Black Ink Crew is your idea. Mm-hmm. So Duchess has been able to go on and have her own shop, Pretty and Ink, in mm-hmm. North Carolina. You might really feel like, oh, you gave her that shop. But just to hear a man just be like, I gave you that shop. It just, like I said, I'm not Duchess's biggest fan, but... I can probably honestly say, like, it seems like Duchess really has, like, but put her I remember all. her talking about since the yes. very first episode about like, her Like, yeah, having she her has put like, her she, heart and soul, yeah. whatever money she's made from the show, like, into her shop. So for you to even say, I gave you that shop. No, you started a show. Everybody got, I know everybody don't get the same amount paid of a paycheck. But people get paid. Right. To be on Everyone the show. gets a paycheck. She took her paycheck and, you know, VH1 may can say, I gave you. Yeah. You can't really say that. So right. just hearing little parts of that interview, I'm like, you know, I still watch Black Ink Crew, but mm. you're very corny. Yeah. You know. I mean, I ultimately watch Black Ink Crew in New York mainly for Sky and Walt. Yeah. Walt, Walt is. <laughs> Water She's nice and brown. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sexy, brown again. Right. Walt just cracks me the fuck up. Yeah. He walked up in that party with that fucking blazer. I died. <laughs> First I thought he was in a suit. I was like, wait, he's just in the jacket. Right. <laughs> he had jeans so on. So funny. Yeah, so, so catch black ink. It's going to be good. Yeah. Um. Now... My personal favorite, it is those little adorable women of Atlanta. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I Let love me tell y'all 
y'all said I this. So B it. got me on <laughs> Little Women Atlanta a couple seasons ago. Yeah. And I'm like, first of all, why am I watching these bitches? <laughs> right. I. It's yeah. just another Atlanta show. And those of you who don't know, it's actually spinoff of the original women, Little Women LA. Yeah. Then they went to New York. Then yeah. they went to Atlanta. And, of course, and then they went yeah. to Dallas. But of course, for some reason, Atlanta just... I don't know. Their shows just seem to because they do got it a all better. those great production places yes, there. Yes, it was. Yeah, and I don't even think I've watched the first season of Little Women Atlanta. I was told about it before season two, and I think I was talking to one of my friends, and she was like, "Yeah, such and such, one of the women, well, Pastor Troy," and she probably like, "Wait." There's a pastor named Troy? <laughs> and then I was like, no. Remember the rapper, rapper. Pastor Troy? I was like, oh. But, yeah. And I really like the Little Women franchise. Atlanta is the only one that I faithfully watch. But I like all of them because I feel like this show really gave a platform to be like little women as well. Little people. Yeah. They have the same regular problems as right? normal sized people. They have baby daddy issues. They yep. got friends that they can't stand. They got health issues. They got the same addiction issues. issues yes. Because the one from it was originally in LA. Yeah. Then they did a spinoff to New York because yeah. the New York girl was ex girlfriend of Tara's yeah. now husband? I think so. Yeah, and she had an addiction problem with, like, alcohol. Yeah. And then they eventually went to New York from there. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, so I really like it. And then, like, it actually teaches you some things. So, for those of you who don't know, if you find yourself still saying the word, you know, midget, that is very disrespectful, very rude, and it's improper. So, mm-hmm. strike it out of your vocabulary immediately. It's... They're little people, mm-hmm. plain and simple. Um, they don't they, call us normal. They call us average. Yeah. They don't like, if you're talking to them, for you to bend down. No. And look at, yeah. They don't like for you to, like, pet their head, which, honestly, if I met, like, the two twins, Andrea and Amanda, I would probably, because they, they're just so cute. I would probably be like, can I just pick you up? And I'm like, no, you're yeah, a regular you can't. person. Yeah, you can't. But they're just I mean, so you cute. can bend down to, like, hug them, them. Yeah. But ultimately, if you're just having a regular conversation, don't, like, bend yeah. over, be like, can you hear me down there? Right. Like, <laughs> right. don't, yeah. don't Treat them do just that. like normal-sized people. So mm-hmm. that's why I've enjoyed watching the show, you know. It is ultimately, like, a learning lesson about those who have different lives. Yeah. That's why I like TLC and Lifetime so much. Yeah. Because they do really go outside of the norm. Right. Especially how they went from dance moms to bring it. it yeah. Because it's a different dancing style. Mm-hmm. But just because it's a different dancing style doesn't ultimately mean that they can't be successful. successful. Yeah. And they're actually more versatile then, in many ways yeah. than the girls from dance oh, moms. Yeah. That takes some energy. Because they do majorette. They do hip hop. They mm-hmm. do ballet. They do tap. Right. A lot of the dance mom girls don't really do hip hop. Yeah, they, I don't or, think they And they could really do. don't do majorette. Yeah. Ooh. So it's like you are right. ultimately getting to know different yeah. I lifestyles. I burned 300 calories just watching an episode. Right? <laughs> that little kick thing they do in yeah. the Yeah, and then the it's like, and... I don't know if I would even want my daughter to be in that because I feel like... Yes, it's dancing, but I feel like it's giving you skills for something later in life that you don't need to be Probably. knowing you can do. I don't need no 14-year-old daughter, I mean, little boy looking at my daughter like, dang, you see the way she went in the split and dipped and popped it back? No. The way these nope. kids are these yeah. days? Yeah. Nope. nope. I guess if you did. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but if you did, you have to be like, look. Right. People are going to look at you a certain way because you dance a certain type of way or you're flexible or you wear a certain type of outfit and it does show like your backside a little bit. You're going to have to automatically know that you're going to be treated a little bit differently with some men because you can do things that other girls or women can't do. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, because I know one of the dads is having a real problem with the majorette because he felt like it was just too grown. Yeah. Um, But ultimately, he went and started, like, going to the shows and stuff. I forgot whose dad it was. Yeah, but But it's a good show. 
Yeah. But anyway, anyway back, back to, to the, you see, see, reality, reality with everything. Mm. But, um, yes, it came back on. I was so happy. I love this show. Like, there are some shows I will just miss or I'll be like, you know what, I'll catch some clips online. Right. Little Women Atlanta is not that. <laughs> right. So, it uh, premiered. And um, just a continuation. And I didn't even know. She was like, um, when you can, can you uh, cast Little Women? I was like, <laughs> right, I said, it came wait. back on? <laughs> yeah, I was looking at clips. And I guess it came. I said, oh, wait, that was last night? Okay. So we went. Um, we went. Sorry. So I guess just starting off, not Amanda. Andrea, mm-hmm. she was the one last season who ended up moving back to Texas to be with her baby father. Baby um, father. <laughs> she, which is a Chris, dumbass. Yeah, because he's left her twice. Um, but she ended up moving back to Atlanta. Um, so now her and her sister Amanda is working on, I guess, like the balance of Amanda not being so involved in her relationship. Which, I mean, if they need to work on that, then yes, of course. However, it just... To me, being a viewer, it kind of looks as if her husband, not her husband, as if Chris just kind of really treats her like shit and walks out on her and the kids. And he will literally like, she'll come home and she'll be like, call him. Where are you? Um, I'm going back to Texas. This is too much. And just at left the her. Drop at, of yeah. The dime. And she's at home with a newborn baby. So, you know. Her sister Amanda obviously is like extra protective of that. And it's her twin sister, so it's that extra bond. Twin little people. Yes. So yeah, so now that's happening. So he's he's back with her and they're living in Atlanta. So we'll see how that relationship plays out. Yeah. Um <sighs> Tanya. <laughs> this girl. So Wait, if, which one's Tanya? The one I don't like? Um, she is the one with curly hair. Oh, the mixed. best friend of the girl I don't like. No, she's one with the two babies. Okay, the one I don't like. No, three babies now. Yeah, three yeah. babies. So, um, she had her baby this episode, or no. she at least went in labor. No, the labor one is the next episode. Oh, okay. How do I know this? Yeah, she's about to go in labor. Yeah. Um, she had her baby shower. Oh, she yes. she bedridden or couldn't yes. really do much. So she ended up, if you watched last season, um, things with her and Nico did not work out. So then her mm-hmm. first baby father, he volunteered to move in. Can you explain the baby daddy situation yes. for the people, please? Because yes. this is one of the reasons why I don't mm-hmm. like this chick. So, yeah, it's it's a lot. So she was in a relationship and got pregnant by Vaughn. Mm-hmm. Um, seems like a very nice guy on camera. I have no complaints about him. He just seems like a really nice guy. She gets pregnant by him, and she's in a relationship with him. It comes out later, I believe she said it, she admitted, that she was cheating on Vaughn with Nico Mm -hmm. and got pregnant. Right. Um, Somewhere along the lines, their relationship didn't really work out. So then he, they were working on getting back together. And I guess that would have involved him moving to Atlanta to be with her and stuff. Um, So during that trying to figure out time, they were still having sex. She gets pregnant again. Right. So then she's like, well, you know what? You need to go ahead and move out here so we can be a family. We can, you know, work on, you know, work on us being a, a couple. So he moves out there. By the end of the next episode, he's gone. So the girls come over and they're like, where's Nico? And she just starts crying. She's like, he's, he left and, you know, he just didn't want to be a family and everything. So everybody's like, that's fucked up. I'm watching. I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. Right. But, you know, good old Miss Juicy being Miss Juicy. Oh, Miss Juicy juicy. is messy as fuck. That's pretty much what it is. (laughs) Yes. So actually... He ended up reaching out to Miss Juicy, like, I need to talk to you. So she's like, I don't know what he want to talk to me about, but I'm going to go. Right. So she goes, and he basically just, like, spills all of his version of the tea, which is completely different than what Tanya has said. 
So for one, um, he's bisexual, mm-hmm. which I could kind of tell. So it's not a bad thing or anything. I'm not shaming Tanya for dating him and he's bisexual. If that's what she wanted, hey, that that's your life. I don't judge at all. Right. So, but you could just kind of tell, like, does he like men too? And, well, yes, he did. So I guess it was kind of like a dun-dun-dun because I guess Juicy was like, oh, Ooh. I didn't know that. Oh, messy <laughs> Refill ass. Refill my teacup. Right. And so then he goes to tell her, he was like, he was like, well, I'm meeting up with you because I know that she's telling a different version of things. Basically, he says, I didn't leave. She got mad at me because I said I would move in, but I only want to help take care of the kids. Mind you, one of the kids isn't even his. He's like, I just wanted to move in, move in to like be a father. I don't really, I'm not ready for a relationship right now. I guess she felt some type of way and she kicked him out the house. And so Juicy was like, oh, that's not, you know. It's not what I, you know, it's not what we were told at all. So then she ends up the nice baby daddy that she cheated with, Mm -hmm. Nico, Mm -hmm. with. He volunteers or either she acts. Somehow he is like, well, I will move into the house, like help you take care of the kids because you're pregnant and blah, blah, blah. Him being the nice guy that he is. So now fast forward to this first relationship. They're now together in a relationship. So it really does look like, Okay, well, the first baby daddy, who I, not the first baby daddy, Nico, my first choice, who I really wanted to be with, he don't want to be with me the way I want to be with him. So I'm going to kind of just paint him as a deadbeat father when that's, I'm not going to say it's not And that's why I don't like her because she's a messy ass bitch. Yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead and go with the backup baby daddy just because I know I can have him. She's like, I mean... I understand that it takes a village to raise kids. It does. But first of all, why are you, why do you keep getting pregnant? Like, yeah. if you know it's hard for you, then why do you keep getting pregnant? Yeah. And then you want to go back and forth between these two men. And then if they don't want to be with you in a certain type of way, the way you want to be with them, then you bad talk, bad mouth yeah. them and talk shit about them. And then you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And you're like, well, we need to come to a, a, a decision. We, I need the two men to talk to each other yeah. and cope. And it's like, bitch, you're the one that keeps getting pregnant. Ultimately, they don't have to talk to each other yeah. if they don't want to. You right. can't force them. Right. So now you got one man taking care of two kids and one is not his. And because he don't want to be with you, you kick him out. It's like... A messy ass bitch. Yeah, like I can't. She's very messy. You give sing like single moms a bad ass name, and yeah. I don't like. I don't like that bullshit. Yeah, she's very. Uh, she's just all over the place, and yeah. So that's Tanya. So that's her. Whatever. <sighs> and then, so if you've seen the money gets married, um, and her name is really money. Yeah. She will monetize you if you if you cross her. Don't get monetized, okay? Um, how does that? Okay, yeah, just take like it for it's what an it itemized is. deduction. It, yes, it could be an itemized ass whooping, according to her. <laughs> <laughs> according to her, but if you seen her wedding special, um, after the Little Women, I didn't know Atlanta she had one. Finale. I'm surprised she even got fucking married. Yeah, so they ended Mullen, up getting married. Get them to Mullen, <laughs> Moreland. It's supposed to be Moreland, but she's in Moreland. Yeah. So they finally get married. Um, it was a cute little spinoff. Um, no and pun intended. I, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I had noticed, but he, her husband, Moreland, had gotten into an argument with his best friend. I believe they had been best friends since they were like teenagers. Mm-hmm. They got into an argument because I guess his best friend didn't show up for some events or something like that. And did not, I think he didn't even tell him that he would be his best man. So he ended up asking Money's brother to be his um. best man. So 
I guess then his best friend felt some type of way, so he showed up to the rehearsal Pissed. dinner, and they get into a heated argument. Money gets jumps in and stuff, and is ready to try to fight and everything. And so as he's pulling money away, and they're all going inside, he says, and I quote. If you knew half the stuff that I knew, you wouldn't even be trying to get married. Now, I heard it. Fast and, forward to right. this first episode. And it always stayed in the back of my mind. But I said, well, if y'all going to ignore it, and okay. And it shows hell stayed in the back of Juicy's mind. Here she yeah, comes because they even talked about it. They were like, so, now mind you, money, ne- they are already married. Yeah. <laughs> so then it shows up, you know, on the season premiere mm-hmm. so what about when what's his name said what marlon be doing like what you think he meant i'm like first off y'all should have talked about that before i do's were said and let me tell you something when a man says that to a woman about another man it's like 98 percent there's something he's, yeah there's true to what he's saying mm-hmm. you cannot be best friends and he not know about nothing about the yeah. situation he Say something like that. Yeah. Like, you ultimately are going to believe what he has said because they're supposed to be best friends, like right. brothers. It they at tell least each deserves an investigation. Yes. At least. And that's what Juicy did. Yeah. It was after the fact, but, you know. So, Juicy reaches out and come to find out he, um, best friend tells her that Moreland has been cheating and got other women when he's on the road. He has a job as a truck driver, I believe. Um, it's so cliche to yeah. like people, I'm a truck driver. They've been so doing I... it since the, the 20s. Like I'll drive trucks and I'll just get women all over the country. <laughs> it's like what? Okay. So yeah. So for some reason, Juicy tells money at the baby shower. Well, we know why because you know you have but to have he, gossip. Me was like not at the baby, baby shower. shower. Like for real. <laughs> so Juicy tells money. Money pulls Moreland to the side. At the baby shower. At the baby shower. And they cut it off, but it ends up going into him kind of confessing that he has been. Well, he said... Oh, but it was before we was married or something. No, he said... No, because they had the thing and then... Oh, no, no. Sorry. He pretty much said... Well, what does it matter? It was before. Like, yes. he didn't say, like, yes, I cheated. But he pulled the jacks. We'll talk uh, yeah. about that a little bit later. Right. I felt like, like it was. it was before. So what does it matter now? Yeah. Now we're married. Like, which that is was the all way before a lot we got of, married. I hate to say it, but which is the way a lot of men think. Like, yes, I cheated on you every single day for the five years we was dating. But the two months we've been married, I've been faithful. <laughs> you know what that sound like? <laughs> Name that Uh-oh. I shouldn't have said. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 not that person. I would have to bribe someone to take it out. Edit that out. <laughs> right. It sounds like Lisa Nicole and Dr. Darren. Yes. Like how he cheated like three, four, five times before they got yeah. married. And, and she be- beat him. And she and still stuff. married him. And because all of that was before, she tried to make it seem like, of course, he doesn't do anything now. Like it's Girl. the most idiotic thing. Yeah. As Dr. Phil says, Past behavior can predict the future, you know, actions. Right. Like, I'm that's just, just going to tell you, like, if you did it 80% of the time after we're married, that You're doesn't make sure, make it. it go down to 0%, you know. Yeah. I mean, before we get married and then down to zero after yeah. we get married. So, yeah, I feel like he definitely was doing something. Whether we get any type of confession I don't know. I mean, I feel like, right. I felt like that should have been a discussion that should have been had, you know, before the wedding even happened. Maybe the discussion was had, but for, you know, production purposes, they was like, can you read You know why? Because he ain't scared of her. Yeah. Because he ain't scared of her. He not going to be honest. Like, you need to be, a man needs to be scared to the point where, like, you know what? I'm not going to do this because if, my girlfriend or wife finds out that I even did something as much as talk, flirt with the woman, she's going to cut my dick off. Yeah. Like, right. Cause even you got to be like, no, yeah. I'm not putting up with this bullshit. Yeah. Cause even shit, sometimes fear don't even help. <laughs> At so, that point, you just got to leave the relationship. Yeah. Fear don't yeah. work. Cause a perfect example of that was like, 
Keisha Cole and Booby. I'm like, you weren't scared to cheat on this woman? Like, you weren't scared she was going to kill you? Okay. So you just, all right. Well, she might be scared to everybody else, but she probably treated him differently because she's married. I seen that special when I was like, you kind of talk to him mean. Then when the camera, he was cheating. I was like, this bitch ass deserved it. (laughs) Like that same hard exterior that key, you could tell like that same hard exterior that Keisha had with everybody else. I'm like, oh, you have it with him too. You know how someone would be like, you broke down my walls. No, he didn't break down her hard ass walls. Mm. Well, obviously, but just mm. not enough. Anywho, we're getting off track. Yeah, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, all the regular characters, Minnie, Sam, the twins, they're back, but... The two main stories was really just like uh, Andrea moving back and Miss Juicy being messy. And yeah, she always gonna be messy. Yeah, but She's that's like, why we love her. So I made a phone call and <laughs> I found out that Marlon was yeah. cheating on money on the road. Like, mm-hmm. why can't you tell her first, please? Like right. before you tell everybody else. But anyway, moving on, and we're gonna move on to. New Jersey. Now, oh, yes. Well, I'm only going to focus on one issue because yeah, that's this all that is mattered. the bulk of the issue that happened in this last episode. And honestly, I feel so mad. Like, yeah. Because it's one thing to have a spat or duel with someone because of an issue, but once you cross a line, of calling someone racist, anti-Semitic, or a rapist, any, a or, rapist any one of those or really damaging, a woman beater, yeah. or whatever the case may be, terrorist, any like yeah, terrorists, like things that are really can be damaging, yeah, especially when you are a person of a certain um, class, yeah, on class and on a TV show, yeah. It gets to the point where, like, no, 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 you're you. No matter what you say from here on out, I don't want to hear you. Yeah, and I'm saying that because just to refresh your memory for those of you that don't remember, Margaret is new on New Jersey. Mm-hmm. She was brought in by Siggy. They're cute pigtails. I know. <laughs> Siggy invited Margaret to go to Florida. Which was going to Boca and it was kind of Melissa's birthday. Besides the cake issue, that's a whole nother story. But when it comes to Margaret specifically, Margaret, out of the kindness of her fucking heart, decided to spend her time and money to have kind of like a memorial service for Teresa's mother that just passed away recently. Now... This does not have to be, oh, I'm trying to get in good with the girls. I genuinely feel like this is the type of person that Margaret is off camera. Yeah. You, Dolores and Siggy, didn't go because you two were still pissed about the night before of the cake throwing. Yeah. So I believe she says she texted everyone, but you guys didn't go. So then when you find out later where y'all went and what it was for, you guys got, well, Siggy got pissed saying, well, they're my friends. I brought you into this circle, but you didn't respond and you were still bitching and complaining about the night before. So fast forward to this last week's episode, it's still, you're still Siggy pissed at the fact that you weren't invited to this memorial at the beach And you were called soggy. These are the two issues that Siggy is mad about. I wish those were my issues that somebody called me Robert and I wasn't invited to brunch last Sunday. I wish those were like the biggest. It's like a Lydia times a million. (laughs) Yeah. Like I wish those were like, so what's wrong, Roberta? This fucker called me Robert. (laughs) (laughs) Those bitches went to brunch without me. How dare you? I wish those were like... Yeah. You know. For... So, Margaret used an analogy in the episode before 
of why Siggy and Dolores still decided to walk in Kim D's charity fashion show. Which we will be at one of these years. I, I kind of have to go. It's we like legendary now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like since the beginning of New Jersey, there's right. always something involving Kim D and her fashion show. Mm-hmm. And rumors. But I, saw, I understood what Melissa and Teresa were saying. Like, this person is horrible to me. You've heard her out her mouth say lies about us. And you still decide to be in her show, which ultimately is picking a side. Yeah. Whether it's for charity or not. Yeah. You could have simply wrote a check. Right. But you didn't have to physically be there. Yeah. You wanted to be in the show. You didn't yeah. have to be in the show. You could have wrote a check for charity and called it a day. Yeah. So I understood where they were coming from. And so Margaret used the analogy because Siggy is Jewish. She says she's a super Jew. I don't know what that yeah, means. Yeah, there is no, yeah, there is no such thing as, and I'm not Jewish, so I mean, take it I know how there's you like an Orthodox and an Ultra Orthodox, yeah. but she's not that. She's right. just saying, there I'm is a no, super Jew. I'm super Jewish, be, her words, I'm super Jewish because my dad uh, was a Holocaust survivor. One, more than kudos to him for being a Holocaust survivor. However, I can't go to the next black person and be like, I'm offended. I'm super black. My great grandmother was a slave. That right. doesn't make me any more or less African American than somebody <laughs> who came straight from Africa yeah. and didn't have any <laughs> slaves in their ancestry. Like, right. That just, like, just doesn't make any sense. If you're kind black, you're black. That's. <laughs> There is no super black, no super Jewish, no super Hispanic. Super white. Super. Supremacist. <laughs> Never mind. Right. <laughs> We're not right. going to go Never down mind. that lane. Yeah, there is no super. No, <laughs> not at all. No one's above anyone yeah. else within the race or outside of the right. race. Just leave it at that. Anyway, or religion. Um. So, Margaret made the analogy, and that's what it was, analogy. Hitler wouldn't have killed me. Does that make him a good person? Yeah. Ultimately, she was saying, like, yes, Kim D is nice to you guys, but that doesn't mean that she's not a piece of shit. Yeah. And a shit person. Yeah. Siggy took, Siggy has a a habit of choosing one to two words or phrases and honing in on that instead of listening to everything that you have to say. Yeah. So, which I got the analogy because I thought, well, you I 99% watched, yeah. of the viewers on the dang watching yeah, the show I was like, got the okay, analogy. I get her because I thought her analogy, she said, well, if Hitler is nice to me, does that still make him, does that make him any less of a bad person or something That's like that? That's pretty much what yeah, she was saying. Yeah, and I was like, yes. no, that makes sense. Like, I could be a bitch to everybody else and have one person I'm nice to. Doesn't make me any less of a bitch. Right. It's it's factual. So, yeah. And because Margaret mentioned this on this past episode, Siggy got really offended. Got yeah, offended ain't even fake offended. Yeah. It's fake. There's nothing to get have, to have gotten offended about. Right. So if Margaret would have said something cuz you know, Siggy did use the whole I'm super Jewish and you using Hitler was offensive. So if Margaret would have used the analogy instead, well, if I'm a slave owner and don't beat one slave, does that make me any worse of a person? Would you have been offended by that? Or would it have been the same thing? Right. Would you have been offended then because she didn't use a Hitler analogy, but she used a black well, she just wanted to get mad just to get mad. Yeah. She just tried to, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to make the whole world yeah. think. And then you, disgusting, vile lady. Yeah, that was wrong. That was a... I went think, and called her anti-Semitic. Yeah. That episode bought me out of the room. Like, I wait, what? I was so... Like, I knew that she said it, but watching it, it was just so offensive hurtful demeaning hurtful and then you guys have you guys have been friends way before this you brought her into the group so did did she show signs of but that's what she was like why why, i brought her into this group and she just treats me so horrible so now that she's on the show she's treating you horrible which isn't the first housewife 
thing that that has happened to. I remember, was mm-hmm. it in Orange County, Alexis and Peggy? They were friends before. And then Peggy was like, not this Peggy, but blonde Peggy. From oh, I was about to ago. say Peggy. Yeah, like, okay, they were like, bl- yeah. And it was like, once I got on this show, you kind of just start treating me like crap. Mm-hmm. Is it because secretly friends don't want to see? Well, ultimately, as you get older, you have friends that you do certain things, things with, with, but you don't do everything with. Right. So sometimes when you do more things together, i.e. being on a show and having to to record together a lot of times, right. you're going to fill out their true personality yeah. at that time. Yeah. And I've personally experienced that where... You know, I was really close with someone, thought we were damn near like sisters. Yeah. And then we I let her into my home and it just went to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know you. Yeah. Like, I thought I knew you. I don't but know you. But you don't. Yeah. So it could have been that. Yeah. But the the lady wears pigtails. pigtails. Like she, I'm not gonna lie. I did. I would kind of crack jokes about Margaret and her pigtails. She but did. I was like, she genuinely seems like a very harmless, like good hearted. She's person. pretty much acts the same whoever she's with when yeah. she's with March Senior. Which I love the fact that she calls her mom March Senior. Yeah, and her mom has like a tattoo. Right. Um. She, with her husband, with her employees. Like, yeah, she acts the, the same. same way with everyone. So, I don't ultimately see how... And the only person who's been fluctuating in their mood or their... Let me not talk about mood because, you know, she's going to cry. But it's been Siggy. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people like Siggy in the beginning. And we got a lot of comments mm-hmm. about the whole Team Marge versus Siggy. Yeah. Between Twitter and Instagram, yeah, the and hood just was in, not, gen- in the just hood general, was not feeling that. Yeah, the hood didn't love you, <laughs> Siggy. It has been everyone's on Margaret's team yeah, because you can be pissed about somebody, even though what you're pissed about is so trivial and so stupid, Miss Relationship Expert. Which... But to go as low as to say somebody's anti-Semitic, it's low. And then, um, Jesus, see, this is what happens when you don't have notes. It's so many people that we talk about. It was, it was, it was a fair, not even a low blow. It was just, that was just low of you. Yeah. It's, and it's like when Danielle was like consoling her, she's like, she's shaking. Yeah. And for her to be like, well, I just said it because I was mad. Yeah. No, you wanted to cut her jugular and make her bleed. That's right. what that was. Honestly, I feel like it's actually worse than fucking Kelly Dodd. Yeah. Because is... has Kelly Dodd have really like, she might have called somebody, no wonder <laughs> she had not <laughs> cheated on you. Or, no wonder. No wonder X, Y, and Z. Kelly Dodd, can you make a t-shirt line called No Wonder? Yeah. <laughs> I would buy like three or four. We should have a segment called No Wonder. <laughs> no Wonder. <laughs> and and say things as if for Kelly Dodd. You're right. But I don't remember Kelly Dodd calling anybody racist. I don't call any. I mean, she's kind of spread the rumor from Vicky about David hitting on Shannon. Yeah. But she didn't outright say oh, yeah. he's a woman no beater. No wonder your husband beats <laughs> It, the rumor itself isn't funny, but just how every every low blow starts with no wonder. Yeah, but she didn't say David is a woman beater. He yeah. abuses women. It was never like outright. I'm painting. I'm telling. Right. Yeah. It's just this has been beyond Brandy and Kelly. Yeah. This is just absolutely disgusting yeah and for the fact that that can come out of your mouth so easy just show the real person this whole season has showed the person that you really are Siggy. Mm-hmm. and i think margaret's a sweetheart I actually reach out to her on instagram she is so mm-hmm. nice mm-hmm. i'm not gonna go into the conversation that we had <laughs> but she's nice like you just mad because you look stupid yeah. you look dumb and then, then when Danielle started throwing glass and stuff at the restaurant, you know what? You know what Siggy says? Like, 
Oh, this is not how we're supposed to act classy. Like, bitch, did you just not realize that you were on the floor pouring wine on the table and screamed at an entire party? Yeah. We won't forget that. That was classy. But her trying to not beat your ass and take it down on plates is not classy. Yeah. And then when Danielle got all up in the arms, Mm -hmm. she was just kind of looking like, she's crazy. Why does she do that? Like... Do you not see the whole ruckus you just caused at this beautiful dinner? Beautiful table. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just. I just. I think she's going through a midlife crisis. I mean. But... It's not an excuse. There is no excuse. And I'm not giving you an excuse. I really think we're probably going to. If she comes back next season. It's going to be something on the lines of Shannon Bador of your hormones is off and you Well, we just, already heard that. I know. I feel like, not even trying to use it as an excuse, I feel like she That reminds me, I'm sorry to cut you off, when you said about her hormones, when she had a conversation with Danielle mm-hmm. and she brought up the whole soggy thing again, first she was saying that it was just wrong for Margaret to call her soggy. Then at the retreat, she said she got mad about being called soggy because people used to make fun of her name when she was younger. Then when she had the conversation with Danielle after the whole situation at the restaurant, she said she was mad about the soggy situation because she knew that she had a hysterectomy. And because she knew she had a hysterectomy, she knew her emotions all over the place. And therefore, she was talking about her hysterectomy. How the fuck do you come up with this? I forgot about the hysterectomy. (laughs) No one knew. I didn't even know until you said anything. I forgot all about that. Like, yeah, she really went and said, well, I went off on her because... When she said that, when she said the soggy thing, it reminded me of a hist. It it reminded her of her hysterectomy, and she said that as like a low blow. And I'm like, D- does a hysterectomy leave you soggy or something? Like I don't understand. I mean, unless like, she had a total, if she had a total hysterectomy, her ovaries is gone, meaning that what she does is- soggy have to do. Like even like I don't have I don't know how soggy automatically equates right. to her history. Like I remember no. when Phaedra said Kenya had scrambled eggs. We <laughs> knew Yeah, horrible. I'm sorry. Horrible. It's just the read yeah. of the century. It's right. I don't think anybody we has knew taught that. what that was referring to. Right. The correlation of hysterectomy and soggy, I don't get it. So no. Siggy, if somehow you find this, or even if you're just listening and you know what the correlation is, if you could just write us and tell us, <laughs> we will let everybody else know. Because I, yeah, I'm confused on that. What the fuck does soggy and hysterectomy? Right. Have if to they're do all at that other? table, let's re- let's pretend we're at that table at that moment before Margaret's taking that bite. She was like, "Oh yeah, soggy." Everybody that's like at the table is like, oh my God, how dare you talk about her hysterectomy? How dare you? It's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun. Like, how does that even. And then the caption on your TV, dramatic but, music yeah. plays. <laughs> like, what? Suspenseful music playing. <laughs> and you guys have to have like the caption on your TV <laughs> while you're watching this. It's like it's so funny. Right. It's the worst. Or to be like whimsical music. Right. Like, oh. Okay. Or it's like overlapping yelling. <laughs> <laughs> Close captions like, I had enough of these bitches. They're all yelling. It'll be unintelligible gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> Close but, captions had enough. <laughs> yeah. It's just really funny. But sometimes I'm not yeah. really paying attention. So, yeah, that would really, yeah, I was watching that whole episode standing up. And I was just squinting, shaking my head the whole time. And the hysterectomy thing, it really just took me out the It game. was like, like, wait, what? I don't, I don't understand. So, Margaret, if you're ever listening to this, I would just like to say you had every right to feel however you felt after you would call this despicable And I would continue to be petty and call her soggy all the time. But you know why I don't even believe that soggy really hit her home to her? is because at the retreat, she was selling shirts that had soggy on them. If they really hurt your feelings, you gonna do what Tammy did and give her that bitch a (laughs) cease and desist. Don't you sell them goddamn shirts. Right. You're not gonna be like, oh, well, I'm gonna sell the shirts now. Right. 
Tammy didn't like that. She was like, bitches is a cease and desist. You're not going to make money off of you talking shit about me. Not on my watch. But yet, you want to make your own money about somebody t- talking shit about you, but you bring it up in the retreat before everybody sees the shirts of you yeah. being t- called soggy and how that hurts your feelings. If it hurts your feelings, don't sell no, sell no shirts. Girl. I'm going to sell some shirts that's going to say soggy bitch and it's going to have your face on it. How about that? Then you really gonna be mad, and you can sue me all you want. I ain't got shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> and the gag is, is. <laughs> but it, it's just. I mean, I know I'm trying to be funny, but still, like that was you yeah. can't. You're on TV. I understand y'all getting fights, y'all throw cake, whatever the case may be. But something like that, and this woman is trying to have fashion lines made in fucking Italy. Mm-hmm. You cannot do that. Y'all know too many people. It's a small, no no matter what level of class you're on, it's a small ass group if you ain't one of us. Yeah. So that's going to go around. Even if that wasn't on TV, that's going to swim around just like Kim D says stuff about Teresa swimming around. Yeah. And I was just, I was just really disgusted by that. I'm like, uh, can y'all kick off Siggy like y'all did Phaedra? Yeah. Cause that was was just ridiculous. Mm, anyway. Ooh, so, yeah. Going to other stupid people, fucking Jax. <laughs> not Teller. No, not no. that beautiful man. Mm-mm. Hey, Chris. No, it's like. <laughs> but, uh, so I watched. Charlie. I say Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Wrong Charlie Chris. Bonham? I'm thinking about Chris that oh, plays. Oh, um, Thor? No, I'm not Chris? thinking about him. Not I'm not thinking about Hemsworth. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about. Evans? Oh, Evans. Yeah, Captain sorry. America. Yeah. The other white man. <laughs> it yeah. took me a quick say. I was like, yeah, Chris. Wait. Chris? Charlie? Yeah. No. Okay. I know. Yeah. Wrong C. Sorry. Charlie. <laughs> hey, Charlie. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I watch Vanderpump this morning because I don't usually watch TV at night. I usually watch lives. it during the day. So um, <laughs> no matter what, I will always think it's weird. The fact that Brittany and Stassi are like, you know what? I'm not, I wouldn't even say I think it's weird that those two are friends. I think it's weird for Brittany and Kristen to be friends. The only reason why I don't think it's as weird for her and Stassi to be friends is because at least Stassi kind of knows the kind of bullshit that Brittany is going through. Right. At least she can be like, well, he's going to do X, Y, and Z and say X, Y, and Z things. And yeah, that's pretty much so. This dumb broad <laughs> decides mm. to sleep with sleep with Jax of after course. finding out that he cheated on her with the black bitch in front of the old lady. <laughs> we gotta get that story confirmed. That's what Yeah. That's what and that's yeah. what Faith said her damn self. And I'm sure I'm protected. Well, yeah, because she told James that she was late. Yeah. Well, no, I meant uh, Brittany again. Oh, yeah, of course it's going to be unprotected, even though he just cheated. So I would at least wrap up. Like, uh, I don't know where else your dick has been. So let me just put this condom on so I can get mine and at least fuck him and kick him out. Like, you let him spend the night. And then you gave him the press. So when Jax was talking to Tom, it's like, well, she wants her space. He was like, well, she doesn't. I don't think Sandoval knew at that time that they slept together. Yeah. So while Ta- Sandoval and Jax are talking, Brittany's talking to like the girls at the at the restaurant and yeah. like, oh my god, I did something so stupid. I slept with oh, Jax. My voice. Cut the goddamn <laughs> fake accent. <laughs> Cut the crap. I just want to say these dumbass girls. And it's just like because this is Jax. I expect Jax to do certain yeah. things. I'm not even mad at him when he does stupid things. It's the anymore. women that I'm pissed off at. Yeah. Like you know he's a piece of shit. You know. And I'm not even trying to like really talk shit about Jax, but this is just known across just know. the land of reality TV of Bravo TV. So it's just like I don't I still don't feel sorry for her. So the girls have like, let's have pretty much oh my god, you didn't see it. <laughs> they had a party uh, for Britney. Yeah. I saw like a clip or two. But when Schwartz was going down the list, yeah. it was like, 
spy, like, green print. Like, this is Stassi. She's good for detecting lies. <laughs> it was so <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> I wish you would have seen it. But, yeah, it was, it was I laughed yeah. kind of hard. Because I'm like, of course, Schwartz comes up with this. Right. And it was like, okay, this is what Stassi does. This is what Brittany does. This is what, you know... Katie does. Katie does. Yeah. And then yeah. it had like a clip of them talking to Jax and like trying to get information out or whatever their t- their job title was in oh, this spy God. group. So they go to the house and Ariana tells Brittany like, oh, did he tell you it was only once? She was like, yeah. He was like, well, <laughs> I've been, and she, she was like, I heard from X, Y, and Z. It was literally, she named like four people and all of them are telling me that it was more than once. And then Ariana's like, well, you can call him. And he's probably going to say, like, what does it matter if it was one or ten times? <laughs> sure enough. I think I did see that clip. Sure enough, she called Jax. And he was like, no, I didn't. No, I did not. And she was like, yes, you did. You did it more than once, you <laughs> fucking liar. And he was like, shut up. Shut up. I didn't do it. Listen to me. I was like. Honestly, I've never heard him yell yeah, at I any of the either. other women that way. I the <laughs> might he might be on the truthful side with this because he <laughs> was so pissed. Usually when it's true, he right. does not yell. Because when I heard it, I was like, I can't it was just funny. <laughs> He's like, I told you I didn't do it. Shut up! Shut up! It's like <gasps> And he, he was on speaker on Britney's yeah. phone and everyone heard they all right. like backed up like clutch their pearls. I'm like, uh uh, maybe he didn't do it. Maybe. But it's smoke is fire. Like, yeah. you kind of put yourself in the situation. And um, that was just... Yeah. We'll see what our kept ass does next week. Right. <laughs> I'm taking the dog. You still didn't take the dog. Right? You go nowhere. <laughs> you can't afford dog food on your own. <laughs> <laughs> What's Girl, Hollywood's probably like 50 bucks for right. a pound. Girl, sit down. And shut up. Remember, remember South Park? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> shut up. It's a bus okay. driver. Okay. <laughs> oh, my okay. God. And yeah. um, Lala, Lala is, is back. back trying to get her job. And she mm-hmm. said that there was a lot of lies she told at the season before because she wanted to keep the person private. Right. And she was like, yes, I lied. I didn't get the truck. It's like, um, yeah. But ultimately, you need to be like Ariana and say, I give no fucks. Right. So I don't have to, I don't have to say to you. anything to you. You pay not a one bill, not a red bill, not a blue bill, not a one bill, not a two bill. So, <laughs> All right, fuck Dr. you. Seuss. Right. <laughs> That's what you need to do, Dr. Seuss and bitches. Yeah. You... Especially Sheena. Oh, I would have just broke her down. So I heard you dating a married man. Bitch. She, what is up with these women who have no space to talk about anybody else? I think... Bitch, you know this spinoff is because you slept with the C-list actor. And that ex-wife wanted to beat your ass on TV. Damn, they should have let her And go. now you're talking shit about Lala supposedly sleeping with the married you know man? what it is. I think ultimately Sheena thought with Stassi out of the picture, she was going to be like the next Stassi. She would never be the next Stassi. Like, I dictate who's in, who's out, and blah, blah. I think, like, all the stuff that she did, that Sheena, all the stuff that Stassi did to Sheena, Sheena thought, like, once Stassi was out of the picture, she now could do to, like, Lala and have, you know, not er- So she Ariana. thought she can be the next Regina George. Yeah, and have, like, Katie and then sometimes Kristen, but maybe replace with Ariana. Be, like, her minions. And that clearly didn't work. No. But, But yeah. she can never be, like, another Stassi. Right. Just because you lost 10 pounds and a druggy husband doesn't mean that you can be able to just to control people. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. Like, even if you did hear she was messing with a married man, I, I feel like the logical thing to have been, even if you did hear that gossip in a restaurant, would be like, you know what? I've been there and done that where rumors were going on about me. People don't know what's true and what's not. Um, so I'm just going, you know, just kind of just keep my biz, my nose out of this. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not even going to indulge this because I've been there and done that. 
That's what a logical person would do. Right. Because ultimately, I don't want to come to you and be like, so I heard you're sleeping with a married man. And then Lala turn around and be like, well, I know you were sleeping with a married man. <laughs> and then your feelings is hurt again. So. And you bust your teeth right when the bitch <gasps> is trying to beat your ass. <gasps> don't Jesus. forget about that. Right. Lady. Yeah. I'm not, at so. least I'm not a divorcee. <laughs> To a drug addict. Right. Like you, no one has any space to talk shit. About anybody, yeah. Pre- the only people that can really talk shit, honestly, is Ariana. And Lisa Vanderpump. And Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> and, and wait, wait, don't forget, Jiggy. Jiggy. <laughs> I'm glad we thought about it right. at the same time. Yeah. But ultimately, no one can really talk about anyone else because they're all piece of shits. Yeah, in their own little way. Right. So, just be like... Ariana and Grumpy Cat. Like, don't... Just don't fuck with me. Yeah. You fuck with me, you're not even gonna get the horns because I have no energy to give them to you. So, get out my face. Mm-hmm. She's like the most emotionless per- emotionless person on the show when right. it comes to things that really don't involve her directly. Yeah. She's like, um... Even when it does involve her. I never forget her first time, like, on, on the show. Remember Chris was, like, yeah. yelling at her face? She's like, are you done? Like, right. <laughs> they were like, so there's rumors that you kissed Tom Schwartz? And she's like, I didn't do that. No, she was like, there's rumors that you were sleeping with Tom Schwartz? She was like, no. That that never happened. And then she was like, but she's just, she's like, you know what? I'm just really tired of it. It's like, I'm prettier than you. I'm smarter than you. Get the fuck over it. Like, yes, I saw that clip. Like, Wasn't well, it Sandoval and Schwartz? I get them so mixed up. I know. <laughs> Sandoval. Yeah. Damn time. But, yeah. But did you ever show. see that special that when Sheena was doing, like, a dance rehearsal this was before Yariana was like an actual cast member. She actually was one of the dancers. She kept like covering her oh, hair and yes, stuff. Oh yes, I think that was I the do. season before they like yeah. she started being in front of camera. She was oh. like for the longest time she didn't want to be yeah, on camera. I, yeah, but since she was being the de- backup dancer for Sheena, she had to be yeah. at that rehearsal. And they were talking about how like she kept covering her <laughs> hair and stuff. Like she was like gave gave no fucks, but. But anyway, that was pretty much the gist of Pump Rules. Oh, Mm -hmm. Kennedy, a dumbass. James Kennedy. (laughs) He was like, so you got uh, (laughs) Jax over here who's, you know, fucking things in his 30s. And then you got (laughs) Sandoval, who's 30-something, and he's like, not getting any sex. I mean, this is what I'm supposed to get? Not be in my 30s and not get any dick like (laughs) he's always saying some like stupid shit okay (laughs) i hope in your 30s you're not worried about not getting no dick (laughs) like i hope oh how's your bmw doing entry level still (laughs) anywho yeah um um moving on oh lord married to medicine (gasps) Dun, dun, dun. Quad, you in danger, girl. You are in danger. <laughs> Head for the hills. Sure. Like, I know I said this before. I never understood why she didn't want to have a kid yet. I, I didn't understand why she was only concerned about the bag. Girl, continue getting that bag. Let it grow and grow and grow and don't give him no damn kids. Yeah, so you can make a clean break. Out now of it's like I understand why she didn't want right, to Right, because the divorce is happening. It's only a matter of when one of y'all gets fed up enough. And I'm so. going to need you, Dr. G, to get like a Camaro or something to speed off in. <laughs> you speeding off in a fucking Mini Cooper doesn't make it, doesn't help the situation. And then this episode, you leave in golf attire in a golf club. <laughs> like, fuck this shit. Me. <laughs> <laughs> He gets so mad and his voice is I've been it, taking care of you. Susan, fuck you. Fuck you. And drum big. The fact that he gets so defensive yeah. and starts cussing and at her. And he comes out of nowhere. Like never heard him like this with her. N- not on never. TV. No. Not on TV at least. But she's saying that she doesn't feel love and supported and you automatically talk about you take care of her. And she keeps telling you it's not a monetary thing. It's not has it has nothing to do with money. Like, well, he's like, well, what else do you want? Because I still like you keep going back to money. And then when she tries to tell you, like, he was like, well, what am I supposed to do? She was like, well, I'm trying to tell you, but you keep cutting me off, man. This is so fucking stupid. This is you full of shit. Like, let let me tell you something. Something is going on. It just ain't came out yet. If, as to if it my is. future boyfriend or husband is listening to this episode, I'm gonna let you know right now. 
the day you talk to me sideways mm-hmm. is the day I'm chopping off something. Yeah. You're going to know what that is. It can be hair. It can be chopping up your socks. It can be chopping <laughs> up the tire. So- <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Because <laughs> I see it now. We about to get this nigga. And I come over like, yeah, we about to do some damage. And you got all the socks laid out. Cut them up. I don't want not one heel intact. Holes everywhere. I see like, uh, we gonna, what else? We going to cut the pants too? Because I'm probably one that's folding up these damn socks. And, and I got to let, let you know. I put on the sock. And it just. Like Gretchen Wieners had holes in her shirts for right. the boobs. And they thought it was like retaliation. It really right. started a fashion trend. <laughs> but um, I just, I am i don't know, because I've been through some stuff, like how people talk to me, especially yeah. men talk to me. And I'm just way too fucking old and don't have time for nobody's bullshit. Yeah. I honestly don't know why. Quad being a little bit older, I don't know what her. I think when she says she's in her thirties, yeah. Um, I don't feel like this just happened when he started when yeah. they, before they got. I, I mean, feel, just after they got yeah. married. I feel like I was talking to a friend about this last night. I feel like he married Quad and had expectations of her being the quiet trophy wife, trophy doctor's wife. Yeah, and. She's not fully falling into the role in the sense of, I mean, she's very she's a beautiful woman. Beautiful. Um, yeah, just you know, she's a little bit more opinionated, which I don't feel like she cut that on or off. I feel like she's been that way, but I felt like maybe he felt he could use his money to shut her up. Um, she's not cooperating with the kids thing. Um, so maybe I guess he. It could be one of them situations where he always has used money to control her and it's been an issue, but maybe it's something that she never thought was a big issue. And then recently now... Or she could have thought it was an issue that would change after they exactly. get married. Exactly, yeah. And he probably might be to a point to where, you know what, three years ago, I probably wouldn't have cussed her out the way I am now. But she's not giving me no babies. She's not falling in line. And because even the way he talks to her, it's kind of like he talks to her as if like he's losing control or something. Kind of like Jax with Brittany. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> like, it's like, whoa. Like, yeah. so I'm not, you know, he could have very well have had the same temper, but it could be a small possibility that it's like, you know what, as time's going by, we got other men in this circle that's they're not happy and they're having extramarital affairs and you not giving me my wife and I pay for everything because he really feels like money is the root of everything. And right. the same way Quad is like, you know what? You're not going to use money to control me. He's like. That's probably why she's been stacking so hard because yeah. he keeps bringing it up. Yeah. So Quad, don't don't, don't open your legs to that married man. Yo, Mary Dan. <laughs> That's sad. I know, right? And yeah. no, let's not forget his comments about the whole Jackie Curtis situation mm-hmm. and talking about how, well, maybe she did do something to where he would go off and cheat. Like, if you're just discovering these comments that he's making now, then maybe he's not the person for you. And maybe there's no there's a reason why you're not having kids with him. Yeah. Maybe you're destined to have kids with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Hell, you, it's too much technology. You got too many coins to not put an egg or embryo. I mean, an egg frozen yeah you can make a little frozen baby test tube baby whatever the hell you want to adopt a baby shit adopt a puppy i don't care you no one has to have do anything for anybody else if they don't deserve or respect whatever that person is doing for them or with them yeah and there's clearly a lack of respect in that relationship it's too much of a lack of respect like i understand when you're in something i know we talk about you know women loving yourself and like Everyone be careful of who you're dating or who you're having a relationship with, who you're sleeping with and all that kind of stuff. I understand, like, if we were to be in a relationship next week, I understand that there are some things that it might take us a little bit longer to do what we say because there's emotions involved. Mm -hmm. But that first 
two weeks to three months is crucial. Yeah. Like, don't be like, oh, let's just Netflix and chill and not go out. Then you don't know how the person will go out. You don't know how they talk to people. They don't, you don't know if they will open doors. You don't know if they will act, pay for stuff or how, they, if they're going to pay for anything. You don't know right. how they're going to respect you when there's an altercation with somebody else, when there's a, deg- a disagreement. Like, you have to get all those things out of the way or at least as much of it as possible before you get to the next level of Mm -hmm. being monogamous, before you get to the next level of opening your legs or putting the sausage in the dang bun or whatever the hell you want to call it before you (laughs) move in with them, before you get married to them, there's before you have kids with them, you can marry somebody, but you don't want to have kids with them because you don't want them to be the father and mother of your child. There's so many different things and so many different levels to all of this that you have to, search for beforehand yeah we might be 30 and 29 but at the same time we've been through some shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) like for real for real and we've seen things in other relationships and marriages or divorces even at our age that ultimately we don't want to have to go through yep and we just learn from other mistakes Mm -hmm. or learn from maury either one (laughs) oh god please don't learn from maury but yeah, um, I wish her nothing but the best. I hope. I hope um, she does whatever what is what makes her happy. Yeah, like people are like I don't believe in divorce. Uh, Girl, you need to. You at the end of the day, you have you deserve right. more, and sometimes people don't deserve that, and sometimes you figure out after you marry that they don't deserve you. And thank God if you find out before you get married right. to them that they don't deserve you. It might hurt. It it's might hurt. it's going yeah. it's going to hurt and it's going to take time especially the longer that you guys have been together. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, what is more important? You staying with somebody for the sake of staying with somebody because you spent so much quote unquote time with this person, ultimately being happy being with someone who respects you and who actually deserves the type of person that you are. Which one outweighs the other one? And then go from there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what else? Oh, on a funny tip. So we caught up on Floribama Shore. Now, I was personally boycotting the show because I was like, nothing will ever be like Jersey Shore. There's only one, probably D. I have to admit, Flora Bama Shore is pretty fucking yeah, it's funny. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> they get in fights. They just. It's real redneck. Mixed with some black people. Esque. I'm not going to say the unpolitically correct term. Country. It, it's very. That other term, WT. <laughs> but it's very. Oh country yeah we gonna leave it at that it's it's very it's different it's very it's country ratchet yeah there we go yeah it's very um (laughs) let's go to the bar and get some some dollar beers right apparently they have liquor stores inside inside of the club with the bar you gotta so i legit can go to the club just to go to the liquor store to get a bottle of some Tito's and legit drink it on the dance floor. <laughs> like that's my version of popping bottles. I right. legit will just go to the liquor store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're just, it's just, it's pretty funny overall. Yeah. Um, That one girl is like Angelina. I yeah, forget her very name. Very insecure about Very insecure, her body. but she has had plastic surgery pretty much on everything. I'm not speculating. That's what she said, she said herself. She puts on a shit ton of makeup. Like her poor pores. <laughs> she's going to have to like really wash that off. And I'm right. pretty sure she's like, let me put my makeup on before these cameras turn on because yeah. I have not once seen her with no makeup on. Yeah, that's bad. Or I haven't noticed. Um, but yeah, it's pretty funny. Like I actually watch it now. Yeah. Um, but on a not so funny tip, we had on Teen Mom. I also watched that today from yesterday. Mm-hmm. And Ryan doesn't get it. He still. So he didn't respond to Macy about the drug and follicle test mm-hmm. because he felt like he doesn't need to do that. 
But then he went on his own and took a follicle test and is waiting for the test results. Is it even your follicles? <laughs> no, I need proof. Right. Like, we you can't. Know. But yeah. if uh, if the lawyer you talk to tells you that the judge is going to make sure that is going to submit you to take drug screens to make sure you're clean because they're not going to give parenting time to anyone who has who is an addict, Right. what difference that is, does it come in, is it coming from Macy than a judge? Because he don't want something in his, maybe it's his ego, his pride, his wife in his ear. He don't want to have to go to Macy and say, I will listen to you. I will follow your directions. You are right. Something he just don't want to have to say that. So you're like, well, fine. I'll take my own follicle test by myself. And it's like, wait. And even that, because even if a judge orders you to do it, guess what? You're going to have to do it in the courtroom. Well, he said he didn't respond to Macy because of the follicle test. It still might be in the system. But why not say I'm not ready to take those right now? Right. Can we do it? Because if you go to court and they make you do the exact same thing, it supposedly stays in your hairs for six months. Yeah, it does. She was willing to pay for it. She can tell the judge, here's the evidence of me saying I was willing to do a drug screen and he wouldn't do it. Therefore, he's trying to hide something. Exactly. It's going to get worse if you go to a judge. Because at the end of the day, you were the weekend parent and you decided to get high even when your child was with the grandparents. So ultimately, yeah. they can be like, well, because the grandparents knew that you were taking drugs and you were in the household with your child... Bitly can't go over there either if you're right. there. Like they can, it like can, supervised visits where you got to go to the McDonald's. Exactly, with a like court it can make monitor. things so much worse. And you get Bentley for like two hours a day. Then it's really gonna suck balls. Like you are not. I don't know. I don't understand what his problem is. Like he's Hopefully. just the only person who I think gets it is his mom because she was like, "Well, I understand that Macy's scared and she wants to protect Bentley." Sure enough, in a scene a little bit later, Macy was like, my my first job is to protect him, and then the second job is to make, make him, him happy. happy. I can't make him happy first if he if I feel like he's going to be put in danger. Yeah. Being a drug addict and you went to rehab for it and you didn't even f- fully complete a full 30 days, yeah. I don't you care if you credit. did extra credit or not, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Okay, we I, we just made that up. He didn't actually do extra credit to leave. But he work said early. he took some courses and that let him finish early. <laughs> God damn, that sounds sources. like extra credit to me. He did you some learn leave. sources and he used his VTO to leave early. <laughs> and these are terminologies for my nine to five, so it's like pissing me off because that's like it really is like he did a learn source. <laughs> like if I do these learn like, sources, learn can source two hundred one. How not to be a drug addict? <laughs> Step one. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Step two, stay away from drugs. Then at the quiz at the end, don't do A, drugs, B, candy, <laughs> D, C, soda. And what? then he get them wrong. He just goes through the review part to get the right Take answer. pictures of the right answers. <laughs> and and then, that's what I do. Oh, so A, so number one was drugs? <laughs> God damn. It's so, oh it's so annoying. But, yeah, you did extra credit. Now you think you can get your kid back, too, because you got out of drug rehab early. Like, you make no fucking sense. Not at all. But, hey. Like, I did the work, like <laughs> Iona said, and now I want my son back. You it ain't that simple. Like that. You have to gain trust all over again. Right. Not to mention he's, like, a little kid. So, it's like. Yeah, I think he's, like, eight yeah. at the time no. of the recording of the show. Like, I mean... I'll pray for you. Maybe. What she said. <laughs> but, and then McKeezy pisses me off even more. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I knew it was going to be hard, but I know it's going to be this hard. Oh, shut up, I just bitch. love it. You married a drug addict. <laughs> shut the fuck up. You knew he was... <laughs> then you tried to make it seem like he was doing Xanax. Bitch, he was doing heroin. Ain't no Xanax in the world. <laughs> That he gonna take three times a day and ten thousand dollars a week, and he's doing fucking Xanax. No, heroin. Yeah, that means you. That fits the bill. He had a needle in his arm or foot or toes, whatever the fuck. Oh my god! You know, have you seen like intervention and they're like their veins collapse and they find anything? 
Some people was like doing the back of their neck oh my God. or their feet mm, no. or some weird ass shit no, because no. all of the veins no. collapsed. Just give me a glass of wine. But I love him so much. Shut you up. actually fell in love with the drug addict. You so you might perfect. not even like the sober Ryan. That is actually very true. Unless she's used to just loving drug addicts. You know, and on that note, we're done. No. <laughs> <laughs> she's used to. I mean, I'm just saying, who's I I personally don't know anybody in my circle or in somebody even that's yeah. somebody a, an acquaintance that's going to be like, "Well, I love him and they are a non-marijuana user." Like no. I don't even know anybody who does coke and speed and heroin and I knew a girl in college. Oh, Ooh, it yeah. Turned her out crazy. Really? It was our freshman year. She was just this nice, cheery, tall, blonde hair girl. Wasn't she Asian? No, not oh, her. Oh, another other one? girl. Yes, no, this other girl. Her, just in case. But she was. She looked like a Barbie doll. She was like really happy and stuff. Mm. Had a little convertible, like clear, like a white girl from Modesto. Mm. <laughs> really nice. And I think she started doing shrooms. And her behavior... Apparently, like, drug dealers was knocking on my friend's dorm windows in the middle of the night. We found her meditating. I kid you not. We found her meditating in the middle of Valley Boulevard. Are you fucking On the serious? street. Valley? With, at, in the middle of the night. This is not a side with, street by the school. This is a main yeah, street. With stunner shades and a red beret. <laughs> Was she at the crosswalk? It was literally like, and somebody had told us, because we came home, and my friend who lived with her, she's like, he was like, hey, is your roommate that tall white girl with the blonde hair? She's like, yeah. She's like, I think she was out in the middle of the street <laughs> meditating. We're like, wait, what? And sure enough, we kind of like drove by, and I guess she got up, but she was like walking, <laughs> but she just looked fucking out of it. But like her behavior just... Maybe she needed Wherever to Wherever you're at, I hope you're well and I hope you're good. It was just crazy. Hopefully to, she took some The first sources. two years of college, I seen a lot of people not be able to handle the independent on my own lifestyle. Because they're so sheltered before they get there. Yeah. Or it's like your parents gave you everything and they still gave you everything, but now you're just living on your own. I saw people get kicked out. Flunk out because of drugs, just being extremely lazy, drinking all the time. Like, I mean, I might have not passed a few classes here or there, mm. but I wasn't going back home. Like, let- right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Anywho. Uh oh. Kind of knocked over this trash can oh. here. <laughs> just act like you didn't do it. It's, it's recorded now. <laughs> oh, um, who knocked over the trash can? Oh, not yeah. us. Fumi did it. God <laughs> damn it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, last but not least, the only thing funny from Roa was Portia's blind date. Uh, she was not feeling him whatsoever. Oh. I mean, they did kind of pick a guy that she descri- described. She didn't mind the swirl. She didn't mind bald as long as they had facial hair. And that's pretty much what she had. But his teeth wasn't all the way straight. Mm. And that was an issue for me personally. Girl, she walked in there. She saw and she walked right back, tried to walk back out. She said, um, <laughs> she yeah. was like, I'm going to leave the church finger. Yeah. Um, other than that, Roa was pretty interesting as far as Cynthia. And I, I was looking at Cynthia's like date. Yeah. And I'm like, why does he look so fucking familiar? Yeah. And he, remember the episode of Steve Harvey where they did a date with twins and they were oh, like, Oh, yes. He was one of the ones that was made up. Oh. And had like a beer gun. Yeah. He was one of them. Okay. I was like, why is he so look so familiar? And Candy, yeah. of course, find out. She's like yeah. the juicy of Atlanta when right. it comes to Cynthia. And she was pretty much like, um, I'm just kind of, you know, wanting to make sure that you're not out just for, because of the type of woman she is because you've done two different shows, one for yeah. sure, about dating. He was like, well, the other show, they asked me if I wanted to do something, but I said I'd think about it if I didn't actually go through with anything. Right. I mean, ultimately... Right, if he wasn't hiding nothing from Cynthia, then... Right, I mean, know. it's not automatically like, well, I was on TV yeah. looking for love. 
because, I mean, people said that about Peter at first. True. But, you know, he's a good-looking guy, and, yeah. you know. He's, I mean, she's happy. I right. mean, obviously, you don't want it to be an opportunist type right. of situation, but... Um, he seems like his head's on straight. Oh, and last but not least, Javi did cheat on Kale when they were married. Of course. <laughs> it's like last minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and another thing. But, oh. I just feel bad because... So many people talk shit about Kale. Yeah. About how you slept with your uh, somebody while your husband is away on duty. But why? It really shouldn't be any difference whether he was in the military or not or deployed or not. Yeah. But honestly, she's she said that she didn't sleep with somebody until after they filed for a divorce. Some people, they feel like that's still cheating. Some people are like, the marriage is dead, so right. why do I have to keep my vagina closed? <laughs> But the fact that he, like, helped paint a picture about Kale being, like, you sleep with other people and blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. It's very low. And you had a lie detector test and you were deceitful. Right. You're pretty much a piece of scum. I'm sorry. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't like Kale. I actually don't hate her. Yeah. I feel like she just needs, like, a big sister. Yeah. She guidance. needs some guidance because she's only 25. Well, 25 at the time of the show. I don't know. She's 26 now. But she's just, she needs a lot of guidance. And I think some people that are slightly older who are not going to just tell her what she wants to hear. And try to get in on her money. Right. Like, there's, she needs that type of person. But um, it's just a lot going on this week in fucking reality TV. Mm-hmm. Um, we got Roa starting. I mean, not not Roa. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills starts tonight, so that'll be fun. Yeah. And Catfish comes on the second. Mm-hmm. Love and Hip Hop Miami starts on the first. Yes, starting the so, new year off with some big ones. Yeah, so that's gonna be fun. But mm-hmm. thank you for tuning in to our sixth episode of Reality TV. Please yes. send us your T mail at realityv at gmail dot com. Let us know all your tea situations. Um, ask us our opinion, whether it's like relationship stuff that we talk about quite a bit or just people just being stupid and disrespectful and you want to vent. We will definitely read it out to you. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Look for Reality TV. And see you guys next week. Bye.